So uh, COVID-19 is unlike anything we've seen in our lifetime. And thanks to the internet, we've grown accustomed to instant answers, how-to videos and information. Now that used to bring us comfort and answers, it's causing overwhelm and confusion. Families who were separated by long office hours and school are now up close and personal. The alarming percentage of Americans, Europeans, and Australians who have zero savings are now in a panic. And this is not Will Smith's next end of days movie. Uh, it's Monday. <laughs> My guest is going to help us keep it together. She initially went to school to be a dentist, but thank goodness she didn't. She's a counselor experienced in working with trauma victims using EMDR and Santre techniques and the co-host of the I Get Better podcast. Today, she's going to help us get better. Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Licensed mental health counselor, solution maker, here to help us not lose our shit, Phaedra Smith, everyone. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure you can put that on some sort of like professional something like, <laughs> we'll help you not lose your shit. I'm going to find a way to incorporate that in my bio somehow. <laughs> if nothing else, a networking tagline. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so has being a counselor during all this made you like more calm or are you losing it just like the rest of us? I go in and out because you're a therapist at work. So it's like I put a hat on and then when I'm not there, I'm like, now I'm just Phaedra. Like I'm a mom, I'm a wife. Um, so I do think that therapy has helped me, but um, I, I really do think that that's been my own personal therapy, me investing and in going to see my own therapist. Wow. That says something about you as a therapist believing in that process yeah. so much that you are invest you're doing it. Yeah. Do Absolutely. you have like a mental health plan for your family? Like, is it really intentional or is it just flowing? I don't know that it, sometimes it is intentional when I see um, my kids panicking or having a rough time. I do go into therapy mom mode and yeah. I'm like, okay, deep breathing, you know, or <laughs> go get your calm, calming bottle. So we like made these bottles um, like years ago. And so they shake them and they do deep breathing with them. So some of it's intentional. And, um, you know, I think, I think it just kind of flows into this natural thing that becomes who you are. Oh man. I mean, that's like goals for all of us. I think a lot of people are not feeling that right now. No, I, don't, I agree. Yeah. You know, I, I, as you know, I asked on Facebook kind of like, Hey, how is everybody doing? I'm going to record this episode. And you saw the replies. I think when I left to come record this, there was 68 replies. Now, some of those are me responding, but mm -hmm. people, and that's not including the private messages that right. I got. Right. People are um, not doing so good. So right. I hope that you can help us, but I don't even know where to start. I tried to like categorize all the <laughs> issues that people are going through, anxiety, depression, disappointment, because all of their stuff is canceling. I, I didn't even think about that, but you know, there's graduations. My friend's dad just died and they don't, he, they're not in the same state as where he was. Um, so there's guilt for um, not being infected. I never even considered some of these things that people are going through. Right. And with a high percentage of um, people that do use antidepressant medicine, I think in the, it's in the top 10 are America, uh, Europe, or the UK, and Australia, which kind of represents my listeners also. Uh -huh. We're in the top 10 of countries that use antidepressants. So you've got existing mental health issues there. So yes. girl, it's a cluster. Okay. So it is. I'm just glad you're here. Yeah. Thank you for um, having me on. I, I think that this is important, is an important topic. Yeah, I agree. Obviously. So where can we start? Uh, there's things we can control. There's, you know, controllables and then there's the not controllables. Um, I think even just like trying to make a plan for families is overwhelming because decision making when you're under stress is intense, right? Right. So I think the first thing we have to do is um, be intentional about creating calm and giving ourselves space to do that. Because if we're constantly in that fight or flight or freeze mode brain, um, then we, we don't make the right decisions. So um, what, what I teach my clients is 
the first thing you have to do, and it's kind of like when you get on a plane and they tell you the first thing you have to do in an emergency is take care of yourself. And so how can I help my children or my family or my friends if I first can't calm myself down and, and kind of put myself in that, in my thinking brain. Right. Um, and so when you are in, in your logical thinking brain, um, that gives you the space to be able to help others. And so how we get there is I tell my clients, ask yourself two questions. What am I feeling and what do I need? So am I feeling emotional? Am I feeling overwhelmed? And then what do I need? Do I need to take a, a, a long bath? Do I need to take a time out or take a nap? You know, do I need food? Do I need something to drink? Like what are my basic needs? Are those covered? And then what else do I need? Hmm. So and basic how, needs would be like the four walls, which is like shelter, food, utilities. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fourth one is, but yes. Yeah, those. <laughs> but you, yeah, but it's your basic needs. So um, yeah, am, am I am I am I thirsty? Thirsty? Am I hungry? Um, am I tired? You know. So if we can first do that for ourselves. We do that so many times for our kids or, or people around us. We want to meet everybody else's need. But what, what is going on with me and what do I need to fix it? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I want to, you, you brought up depression. Um, and I also saw a lot of anxiety on some of the posts with the sleeping and stuff. Mm -hmm. and so, a lot of um, stuff, yeah. 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 And anxiety is a, is a huge, huge thing. And I also thought about ADHD you know, all those folks sitting at home and you, at <laughs> I'm raising my hand for all of you that are not watching on YouTube. <laughs> I'm here and unmedicated everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Loud and proud. <laughs> Loud and proud. Girl, let me just rabbit trail on some ADD because yeah. the reason, I, so, oh man, I just created two rabbit trails. That, there you go. There's there you go. Of ADD is um, when the reason that I asked all those questions on Facebook or asked that question, got so many responses on Facebook. The reason that I wanted to do that is because I only have my perspective. Mm -hmm. And so if I wanted to produce a podcast episode that addressed all the perspectives, I knew that I needed that input, but girl, I can speak for some ADD. Okay. <laughs> I have never been, uh, officially diagnosed and I have never been medicated, but it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. Right. And also, um, I do occasionally experience some anxiety. I've mm -hmm. never been medicated and I've never been diagnosed. So that's my disclaimer. However, yeah, I, as an ADD person, when I am feeling rises in anxiety, decisions are hard to make, like so hard to make. So just when you ask me like what, you know, ask yourself, how am I feeling and what do I need? I was thinking, holy balls, Batman. Like I wouldn't even know how to like, I don't know what I need. I need, I need the world to like calm the F down. <laughs> right. What I need. But, and then the other thing is I'll like read a sentence over and over and over again. Uh -huh. Oh, you definitely have ADHD. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just had it, heard it here first folks. <laughs> My visual diagnosis. Um, yeah, it's really tough. Like I have so many different coping skills and I talked about them in the last episode mm -hmm. when you, when I address like working at home, but uh, yeah, your imagination is so strong. And that's the superpower of people with ADD is you have amazing like thought um, resources, right? But then those thought resources, it's like the circus sometimes. It just take over. Girl, yes. <laughs> so yeah, I remember when um, my son first got diagnosed. First of all, I knew he had ADHD, by the way, but my husband, like for whatever reason, needed an outside person to tell us. Sure. So whatever, we went and got it done, um, which was good um, because he was able to talk to my son and ask him questions even about sleeping. And so I remember him asking the question, um, when you are asleep at night or when you're trying to go to sleep, what are you doing? And so my son was like, I'm just looking at the ceiling. Like he's just staring off into space and he has his whole thing going on. And, you know, but you mentioned you, you had to read the same sentence over and over. He was struggling in school with re reading the same sentence over and over. He wasn't completing work, couldn't stay focused. And he's very smart. Mm -hmm. So um, helping him to get the tools that he needs, like he feels like a brand new person. So, yeah. 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 So back to our original yes. trail, <laughs> rabbit trail concluded. <laughs> um, so you were talking about depression, I think. Yeah, I, well, depression and anxiety. One of the things 
I, um, I noticed a lot was a lot of anxiety. Keep, people keep staying up at night. And some people put on there some solutions also, which some people put, you know, they use melatonin, um, they um, use essential oils. But one of the things I tell people is like, set the mood, your nighttime mood, set the mood so that you start to train your brain to know when I smell this smell, when I hear this song or this sound, or um, when I get this bath, this is, this is me telling my brain to wind down. Um, and also having something by your bedside that has like maybe a notepad for all the thoughts that are ruminating in your brain to just jot those down for the next day. Cause what your brain wants to do is get it out. Yeah. So let it do what it needs to do. The energy that you're feeling on the inside that's just overwhelming you, like find a, a place and time to get it out before bed. So whether that looks like going for a walk or a jog or just, um, doing yoga in your house, doing some jumping jacks, like whatever you need to do to get the energy out, let it, it's, it's, it's going to keep you up. Mm. So paying attention to, um, not just what you feel, but also what is my body telling me it needs to do right now? It's telling you something. And, um, and so we have to get accustomed to meeting our own needs and spending time with our thoughts and saying, you know, what, it, what do I really need right now? Do I need some comfort? And then what, what kind of comfort can I give myself? Mm -hmm. I never thought of anxiety as energy, but I really like that reframing of it because it's, I feel like when I just repeated that in my head of I have energy versus I have anxiety, I feel less like a victim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a cool, cause I immediately, yeah, now I feel real self-conscious about my ADD <laughs> disclosure. Cause, <laughs> cause you know, um, uh, immediately I play a lot of movies in my head. So immediately I imagined me doing push-ups in my living room, which is something I did recently, mm -hmm. but um, as a way to get that out. But yes. the other thing that I'm hearing you say is that a routine is something that needs to happen. So for those families that are not routined at the moment, maybe because they were like, oh, it's spring break, because it was. In, in Escambia County, Florida, it was spring break. And now it's corona break. Right. It's now it's just life. Correct. Yeah. So they need to, how can, what's a way that families who, you know, were separated, as I said in the intro from with school and work schedules who are now crammed together in one space, how, how can they adjust and create a schedule with each other? Right. Um, I, I think being intentional again, that's the, that's the word of the day is intentionality. Um, but sitting down as a family and coming up with some sort of schedule. So for us, we, our schedules are all over the place. So we talk the night before about what the next day is going to look like. And so I know when I have my, um, my sessions planned out and I know what that's going to look like. Um, and then we coordinate with the, with the children. So getting a schedule, I think is very important. I, and I told somebody this the other day, um, it is important for us as human beings to feel like we have a purpose. Like it's important. And so spring break is one thing, but then we need to get our lives back on track because it's going to affect you. It does affect your mental health to just be sleeping all day, to not get getting up, putting pants on, you know, to not get up and wash your face and brush your teeth. Those things really affect you guys. So so even just the, the small things of making a routine to say, I'm, I'm not going to make myself get up at eight o'clock on the dot every day, but I will set a range between eight and 10 o'clock. I'm going to be up and getting ready for the day. And my children are going to be up, uh, be up getting ready for the day. And then what do we want to look like Monday through Friday? What do we want our schedules to look like? Mm -hmm. you know? I could see where that family meeting would come into play. Cause if, in most families, it's the mom that makes those and forces those rules and makes mm -hmm. those rules. But so I could see where it would be important for mothers who maybe are used to like, that's their solution. Take charge, enforce the rules. I could really see where coming together and creating the rules together would create more ownership mm -hmm. and the kids would be able to, it actually probably would give the kids an opportunity to express what they need too. Cause maybe Absolutely. they, you know, I think we underestimate kids. Sometimes they can tell us what they need. 
Yeah, I agree. I, I, I actually read an article the other day about um, just talking to your kids about it, the coronavirus and how do we do this and how do we um, allow them to have that space, you know, and I didn't think about this, but because my schedule, we have to regroup every night what the day is going to look like. I started to incorporate my children because they needed to know that they weren't going to be, the plan was to go over such and such as house and that's not the plan anymore. Um, and so, and I needed to be able to explain to them why that wasn't the plan and allow them to express their fears or their, ask their questions and say, that's not fair and get it all out in the open <laughs> <laughs> because it's not fair and they have their feelings. And I think one of the worst things you can do as a parent, and, um, a lot of us do it, you know, until you know better, you just do it. Um, but we, we do shut down our children's feelings and I don't know about you, but I remember as a child having moments where my feelings weren't heard or validated and those things stick with you, um, in life. And so hearing them out and explaining what's going on without, you know, putting a mass amount, a massive amount of fear in them, but explaining to them what's going on in the world in the best way that their little brains can understand it, letting them voice their concerns or their feelings, and then also letting them know that plans may change from day to day. And so we'll yeah. meet as a family and talk about that. Yeah. So when you personally, are you doing that over dinner? Like what's that look like for you? Because I think for a lot of families, um, you know, we've got big brother is gaming, um, you know, little brother is doing something else. Um, dad's trying to, I always picture like my dad worked in his shop a lot, which is what they called, he called the garage, you know, dad's in the shop, just tinkering doing his own thing. Um, I don't know what mom's doing, but like, you know, giving the all call for everyone to come in, like that was never a popular thing for us, mm -hmm. but we were, we were unusual, uh, for most American families, we would sit down every night at five thirty and we had dinner. And so if there was something to get talked about, you usually got talked about at dinner. Right. So, I mean, what do y'all do and what, what's a, a practical way that other families can kick this off who are less structured in their day to day? Right. So we're like what I call like semi-structured because we, we have some ADD over here also. So we have like a range of things, you know, um, but it's either for us going to be at family dinner time, which we try to have a sit down dinner at least two to three times a week. Mm -hmm. um, or it's for, for me, it's right before bed because of course that's what my brain wants to like, da 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 um, but for me, for us also is right before bed. Um, and so I normally pull everybody into the room and we sit on my bed and we just talk. And so some, one of the, somebody taught me this and I started doing this. They asked their children, what was the worst part of your, what was the best part of your day and what was the worst part of your day? Hmm. And so I started doing that with my children. And so keep, keep that up. Even though you're home together all day, you don't know what's going on with them all the time. So even just at being sure to check in with them with that, what's the, what's the best part and what's the worst part? That allows them to voice what's going on and you to kind of keep that line of communication open. That's good. I love that. Yeah. What about fam like extended family members? Some of the comments that we got and I can really identify with these feelings is the stress of maybe more vulnerable family members um, not self-isolating or not understanding why they need to self-isolate. You know, we've got senior citizens that are in um, long-term care facilities who can't have visitors. And, you know, for a lot of them, they're having um, end of life fear. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, they're having that isolation. So right. how, I, I, I kind of doubt that anybody in that age category is listening to this podcast, right. just from a technology standpoint. Right. So can we speak to the family members of those? How can we help them now that we know how to help ourselves? Because you kind of covered, all right, you know, put your on your own oxygen mask, right. ask myself, how am I feeling? What do I need? Mm -hmm. We talked about the nuclear family unit. So mm -hmm. now how can we help those outside of our home who are related to us? Um, one of the things I told somebody the other day was I think, putting ourselves in the mindset of like pre-technology is also going to be good because we do have to start to think outside of the box. How did people used to connect? So 
Um, but, but even with the phone, and I don't know, some, some elderly people, you know, are not at an age where they are still using the phone. Um, and, you know, I know my grandma, she has no internet, like there's nothing. Like she has, she has internet because my uncles put it there, but she does not have a computer and does not have a phone except for a house phone. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So they have to go over to check on her um, daily, one of them still. But um, even just like writing down your your thoughts and stuff, guys, there's there's an element of, of this thing that we that puts us in a situation where we don't have control over some things, you know, and so finding ways that I can I can still get my needs met. And so what that might look like is writing a letter and mailing it to them and ha doing something with the family like, you know, the kids draw pictures and mailing it to them and or sending pictures and stuff like that. Um, calling, FaceTiming if they have that capability, um, doing things to connect that maybe we've kind of gotten out of the habit of doing, Yeah, you know, but it will also create quality time with the family to sit down and say, what do you want to write to Nana and, you know, Papa, you know, what do you want, what kind of picture you want to draw together? And, you know, I think those things are, I like getting letters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. I love happy mail. Yeah. Yeah. So those are some ways I think to to connect um, and, and also being vulnerable with who you have as a support system to say, hey, I'm really struggling today. I miss my grandma or um, mm -hmm. being able to let the kids say that. I think those things are, are valuable. Um, but again, if we don't create space for ourselves, then we can't hold space for other people easily. That's so true. And it's some of us are, it's harder to express how we feel. Um, yes. Like, so my husband and I, uh, he's very, he has a, he has a wonderful linear thought process, right? Mm -hmm. So he has a mantra for me. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of having your spouse make a mantra for you, but it's great. I highly recommend it. He <laughs> says, focus and follow through, Meredith, focus and follow through. And you know what? I laugh, but it has helped me so much. He's like, you don't need 12 internet tabs open. I'm like, well, what if I'm going to go back to one? He's like, will the internet go anywhere? No, you can go back. So he has helped me a lot, um, but my strength is not being linear in thought and letting those thought processes go in different mm -hmm. directions and mm -hmm. using creative words and repurposing them in order to communicate why, what I think. However, when you put those two people together in a stressful situation, we're communicating very differently. So we came up with a number system so one is like, everything's cool. Nothing's going on. 10 is hair on fire. I'm going to like pass out because I'm having an anxiety attack. Right. And so every once in a while we're like, Hey, Hey boo, what's your number? <laughs> and oh, he'll, he'll be like, you know, three or four. And I'll be like, okay, I'm a six. Can we hug? And we just like stand and hug and it like down regulates or something. And it just That's makes awesome. us feel better. And then we can go and, you know, talk to the family member who decided it'd be a good idea to drive to Orlando right now. Oh, wonderful. That's not a real example at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you spent a lot of thought and time thinking about other ways to help the listeners. So I know I've been selfishly asking you my question because no, <laughs> I want to make sure I get them answered. Um, but I would love to hear without, with less of my interruption on my part, uh, what what you wanted to share to help? Um, yeah, I I um, jotted down a few things, um, and it's just so much. I'm probably not going to get to everything because I don't, you know, I want to be mindful of our time. Um, but one of the things I I wrote down was our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are linked. So it's very important during times like this to monitor your thoughts. What am I saying to myself? What am I telling myself? What am I creating as the worst case scenario, right? So if you think of it like a triangle, you would have your thoughts at the top and then um, um, at the right corner, you'd have your feelings and then at the left corner, you'd have your behaviors or actions. So if my thought is we're all gonna die, I'm probably gonna be feeling anxious mm. or maybe even depressed. Um, and then so my behavior might be, you know, that I am isolating, not in a good way. Um, and so what am I telling myself? And then how can I, how can I um, stop those irrational thinking that um, that irrational thought 
And what do I need to say to myself to combat that thought? No, we're going to be okay. You know, or if you, if you're religious, you know, God is in control, Mm -hmm. whatever that looks like for you, but capturing the thoughts is going to be so important for you in this time, because it truly does affect how you're, how you're feeling. Um, and then using those coping skills, like getting out in nature and going for a walk, if you can, you know, Mm -hmm. perhaps in social distancing, um, or sitting on your patio and having a cup of coffee or tea or water or whatever you, but being intentional about saying to myself, what is it that I need? I need to create some space for myself. It's okay to walk away from my family without guilt for a moment. Like we're all together. We might need to be separated for a minute so that we all don't like set each other's hair on fire. You touched on something really big right there. Yeah. So I'm going to like try to hold that thought right here <laughs> and then, but address <laughs> coping skills. One off. Um, but the offshoot, oh, it's gone. Dang it. I hate when they have Man. Okay. So I'll just go on that rabbit trail. Um, Introverts right now are having trouble because they, they have people they can't get away from, honestly. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, no privacy. Extroverts are having trouble too, because they're being told what to do. um, And they're being told that they can't see anybody. And I mean, it's it's like a stirring inside of them that an antsiness and that's really snowballing into a lot of anxiety. I just found my other thought that was living over here. You should say it out loud and we can I can remember them. Yeah, I do. Well, it's connected now. So it's actually working out pretty good is when you said capture those thoughts, such a great point, right? Because awareness is in every 12 step program. Mm-hmm. It's step number 1. Mm-hmm. Um but for the introverts that can't find that time because now they're supposed to be homeschool teachers and they may still be working from home under a boss who's not accustomed to letting his employees have any autonomy. So he's sending constant and annoying controlling emails Mm -hmm. to a husband who, whatever your relationship is with your husband or your partner, now that's amplified because you're in a closed space. Um, so, you know, they can't find the quiet that they need and the extroverts can't find, they can't easily, as easily access their friends where that they need to talk it out. Cause sometimes that's how extroverts do it, right? right. I mean, I don't know if that's an introvert extrovert thing, um, but so do you have any practical tips for those? I'm all obviously very prone to practicality. Yeah. Um, do you have any practical tips for the introvert and the extrovert on how to access those thoughts in order to capture them? I, I think, I think um, creating a quiet time, allowing your, th- this is one of the things I, I said to someone, um, th- this person I know was telling me how they were at some place and they all of a sudden had started having this panic attack, but they made themselves just sit there and just work through it. Mm-hmm. And I said, why did you do that? And they were like, oh, I don't know. And I said, if you were in, if you entered a dark room and you felt panicked and there was a light switch because, and you didn't want it to be dark anymore, what would you do? And he was like, I would turn on the light switch. And I said, I think that we need to give ourselves permission to do what we need to do. Because if not, we sit there and we panic and we suffer and we don't have to. So to the people that are suffering, I. I, I'm going to say this again, please remember to ask yourself, what am I feeling and what do I need? Sometimes you just need to say no. Sometimes I need to set boundaries. This is the right, right now is a time in your life where you're probably going to need to set some boundaries and say, this is the time that I'm going to be doing work. And then this is the time I'm going to be doing my, you know, my own stuff so I can breathe. Right. This is the time I have with my kids because I have to focus on them. We are in a, a day and time where our schedules cannot look the same. I can't sit at a computer for eight hours uninterrupted because my kids are running around the house. Mm -hmm. So again, looking at my calendar the night before and structuring my day with my family and saying, this is how it's going to look kids. Mommy's going to need some quiet time during this time. And and during that time, daddy's going to do this. Are you going to be here? And I know not everybody has that support, Yeah, but we have to think about what resources do we have right now? 
And then how am I, how can I best use these resources? That's so good. You have to change your expectations. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's such a great tip. I think that will help people a lot because if you change, if your expectation was working an eight hour day straight with a 45 minute lunch and, you know, and that was your, your pattern and you expect mm -hmm. us the same pattern, but under a different roof, you're going to mm -hmm. really, really struggle. That's mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. oh, I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, talk to the people about how to feel less trapped. Is there any mind shifts that we can make um, just to feel less in a corner? Um, because as we continue down these weeks, you know, we're probably going to have some tighter restrictions in order to flatten the curve, as they say. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, for people who are planners, there is not a lot of definite data. There's mm -hmm. not a lot. There's no clear light at the end of the tunnel. There's no finish line. So right. for people like, and, and I'm in this category, I'm a goal-oriented girl. Right. So I'm like, you give me a goal. All right, let's yeah. do this every day. We're working towards the goal. But if you keep messing with my dang finish line, I'm going right. to get pissed. Like right. quit changing the rules of the game as the game is being played. And that's exactly what's happening right now is the rules of the game are being changed as it's being played. And uh, we're all just told to hold on, hold on. But right. for some who have been laid off and they don't have any work at work at home options they've expressed that they feel like a useless person they feel purposeless mm -hmm. you know and for those that are um tr trying to homeschool their kids they're feeling failure mm -hmm. um and for those that you know need to feel progress and traction they feel like they're just slipping all over the place with no traction that everything that they do every day gets undone and they're reminded it every day when they wake up and there's dirty dishes and they're like, I just did those <laughs> and they've got work. Mm -hmm. So how can we feel um, less trapped, more grounded, more progress, even if that is self-manufactured for the time being? Right. So as you were saying, um, people feel like, you know, I don't have a purpose or um, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do or I, I can't find my footing. So the things that I, I, when I think of this is I think this is also such an amazing opportunity for us because we get to find new purpose. When will we ever get this chance in life to find, to be forced to find new purpose, mm -hmm. to be forced to challenge ourselves to change and to do something different, to be forced to be around our children that we sometimes uh, are really upset that we only see them three hours a day during the day. Mm -hmm. um, when are we gonna get this time? And so I say, I remember when I could not find a job. I, I, I did everything I could. I, it was just not the, it was not the season for me. Um, and I was forced to be a stay at home mom. And I remember really, really struggling with that. And then I remember thinking, when, this will not last forever. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to look back and regret not embracing this moment with my children and not embracing this time that I could be sitting outside doing sidewalk chalk with them, you know, and not embracing this time that I can read them a book or tell them a story before they go to, go to bed or embracing this time that I can spend more time with um, in devotion or prayer or meditation. So I, what I wanna say is life is forcing us to live outside of the box and to do things differently. And a lot of time and anxiety and depression comes in when we're trying to put ourselves back in the box. Guys, the box is gone, <laughs> okay? Amen. <laughs> and it's okay, <laughs> this is out of your control. Um, and we can't, there's, if you constantly are battling with trying to control the things that you can't control, you are in the, you're in a failing war. Mm -hmm. So let's get back into our circle of control and let's focus on the things that we do have control over. So I can get up and I can get dressed today. I can brush my teeth and I can get my kids ready for the day. I can set up a pool outside and let them play outside in the water today, you know? I can spend some time with work and then set a time aside to, to have lunch with my kids today. These are the things I can control. And so I encourage the listeners 
um, to really focus on the things that you can. So one of the exercises that I have done myself personally in my own therapy, but I also have recommended to clients is you draw um, a circle on a sheet of paper, which I don't know if people can see this. Can you see that? Okay, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's very simple. It's just a circle. And in, in this circle, you put things that I can control. And you write down and what you're going to start to see is the things that you can control are all the things that are related to you. And all your worries are going to be written on the outside of that circle. Those are the things you most likely cannot control. I can't control my almost 80 year old grandmother um, that refuses to stop going to church. I can't control that. <laughs> I feel I can, like that's a real example. <laughs> it is a very real example. <laughs> I cannot control the church that she goes to that continues to have services. Lord. I cannot, I can, there's a lot of, I can't control the people that are buying up all this toilet paper and um, food, even though they're restocking every day. I can't control these things. I can't control how I react to those things. I can't control how much social media I'm, I'm letting into my life on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I can't control how much news that I'm watching on a daily basis. And I was talking to my mom about this last night that if I feed myself toxic things all day long, guess what I'm gonna feel? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna feel toxic. Mm -hmm. And so setting boundaries around how much social media you're, you're, you're spending, how much time you're spending on social media uh, and watching the news, like it's, it's important to stay informed, but I think that if it's affecting you in a negative way for your mental health, I think we need to set some perimeters around that, those things also. I would agree with that. Yeah, controlled consumption. Yes. That is so good. Yes. Yes. I don't know if I answered the question or not, but I think you did. You've given us such good nuggets and I'm going to try to summarize. And then if there's okay. anything else that you want to add, then definitely add it. So okay. first thing, just like an airplane oxygen, what am I feeling? What was the second one? What, what do I, what do I feel? How do I feel? And those are feeling words, happy, sad, anxious, whatever. Right. And what do I need? So okay. how do I meet those needs? Okay. What am I feeling and what do I need? Circle of control. Yes. And the, and the theme of, of everything that I'm hearing you say has to do with structure. Mm -hmm. And I think some people are going to love that. I'm one of those people. I really thrive in structure. Although I've worked from home for about 16 years, I create my own structure Mm -hmm. Um, but everything that I hear you say is not possible without intentionality. So right. intentionality and structure, but it looks different for every family. Yes. So these lovely, lovely people who are posting all of their hand sewn crafts and cookies and perfectly organized closets. I am inspired by that. I will say, so I'm not shaming them. But I think that there's another group of people who see that and it makes them feel overwhelmed. So yeah. that those people can practice controlled consumption, mm -hmm. but, um, but just also having the knowledge that your, stru your structure, your schedule is going to look different in your family. And as you pointed out, it looks different every day and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I love that you said, you know, it's a range. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be like dressed and ready to go at 8 a.m., but my range is going to be 8 to 10 a.m. That's so freeing for people who don't like structure. Right. Yeah. I, I need structure, but I don't like structure. Like, I don't, I, it's, I'm a weird, like, I need to be, like, in this area of, <laughs> this, is, this is the range that we're in. And so about this time, this is our, I need to have a cutoff time or I, it will never cut off. Um, but it's, it's, it's so, it's so, I think it's so important for us to stay functional and to stay like, we feel like we have a purpose. Um, and, and I want to say this because I think this is so important. Have grace for yourself. Some days will be more easier than other days. And the days that is hard, again, I'm, if I'm not in a good place, I can recognize that and say, today, I may need to stay in the bed a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, or, you know, today, I, today's not a day I'm not, I'm going to be like doing all these arts and crafts with the kids. Today's a day where they might have to be on, you know, on Netflix for a little while longer today. Like giving yourself, again, I allow myself to give myself space and room and kindness and extra love and comfort because if I don't do it for myself, 
Mm -hmm. How can I extend that to others? Yeah, that's so true. And just having the freedom that every day is an experiment in that, in that self-care that, you know, uh, it can't, like for me, I can't eat that bag of chocolates every day. Like <laughs> it's not a good plan. So, but some days I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to eat some chocolate. But the other day self-care means I'm going to exercise. So mm -hmm. these tips were so good. Can you tell people how to get in touch with you, with your private practice, your podcast, your website, all the things? Yes. Um, so my private practice is, um, the name of it is called Greenhouse Counseling. Um, the website is greenhousecounselingfl, as in Florida, dot com. Um, you can reach me on there. My, and you can email me via, via the website, um, or you can find us on social media. We have a, um, a location here in Pensacola, Florida, and we have one in Clearwater, Florida. Um, and my phone number is 850-329-5349. Um, and I wanted to, if you don't mind, I wanted to give out a, a little bit of information um, for some folks that might need um, some immediate care. Yeah. Um, there are places, I, I am offering telehealth, which most places are offering that. So that's virtual um, counseling sessions. Um, but there, as a reminder, there's a National Suicide Prevention Line. It's 1-800-273-8255. Um, I think a huge part of this is recognizing that when I ask myself, how am I feeling and what do I need? Being honest with yourself is going to be so important. If you're in a low place, it's, it's, it's okay to reach out for help. That goes back to having grace and being honest with yourself. We have all had those times where we are just not doing well. And so I encourage you to reach out for help and to not let shame um, back you in a corner because when we're feeling low, we're not thinking in our um, most rational you know, brain. And so um, this is a time where you may need a little bit some more support and that is okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so also I, it just kind of came to me this morning I, I, because I also work for Lutheran Services Florida um, and we, we, uh, a part of our, uh, services is offered at the Gulf Coast Kids House. And I work a lot with, um, sexual and physical abuse. And so I just want to remind everybody that all adults in the state of Florida are mandated reporters. So if you, um, see or know of any vulnerable adults or child children that are suffering, um, child abuse, um, to please call the hotline that is 1-800-96-ABUSE. 1-800-962-2873. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to share is the Curry House. Um, that's also another Lutheran service. Uh, it's, a, it's a shelter for um, young, uh, young children or 10 through 17, and they provide short-term residential sheltering and counseling for runaways and troubled youth. And so there, there are parents that they're struggling with their kiddos and they're feeling like, you know, they might be about to be abusive or, you know, or some things are happening. They can't get their kids under control. Um, I'm not sure what their um, availability is right now, but that is another resource. It's called um, the Curry House. And so I just want to give y'all those resources because there is a lot. And we, we, we have 211, we have UWF that is providing services to, to staff and students. Um, you have... Uh, the uh, crisis um, text line, which is, um, you can text GULF to, um, and that's 741-741. You have the Lakeview mobile response team. Um, there's there's a, a lot of resources out here. Please don't hesitate to email me um, or even, you know, Meredith, and I can give her the resources. But I love that our community is here to support us all. Um, and so please don't think that you're alone. Do not allow shame to, to put you in a dark space to say I'm alone and I'm embarrassed about being alone. You're not alone. Do not let ir irrational thoughts um, and become your facts of life because that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, please, please don't hesitate to, to reach out because I will remind you that's not true. You know, yes. so that's so, that's so good. And you, the resources that you mentioned are American resources, but if somebody um, not in the United States, wanted to reach out and do a tele, telehealth, I think you said, mm -hmm. um, video chat, then that would be okay? 
Well, for me, for most people, you have to be licensed wherever you kind of, so I can't really do it in, let's say Alabama, because I'm not licensed there. Okay. Um, but I can, what I can do is try to find you resources. Okay. So for, for you're good for everybody in Florida. Yes. And then, um, and then they can always get in touch with the show, or maybe we can find those resources and kind of put them in the show notes. Yep. Um, which, um, if you're new to the show, the show notes come out on Saturday. I send out an email kind of recapping what was spoken about on the show, clickable resources, pictures of my guests to be included in that. Just text real to 66866, put in your email address, and then you're, you're in. So thank you again, Phaedra. This was amazing. And I also want to thank everybody who wrote in and contributed to this episode. So I'm just going to give them a quick shout out because that took a lot of guts to comment publicly and Absolutely. say, I am not okay. Here is how I'm not okay. Send help. <laughs> so I want to thank Hillary Malema, Heidi Sampson, Kimberly Booker, Rebecca Arsley, Dory Nurse, Catherine Paschke, Grace Hooker Coleman, Sissy Dittrich, uh, Crystal Sillins, Elizabeth Kilpatrick, Jamie Dickerman, Rachel Mock, Lauren Bogus, Melody DiCarlo, Tracy Jones, Leah Weber, Faith Evans, Bonnie Crawford, Melissa Coates, Liz Chambers, Callie Edwards, Amelia Velasco, Carla Holman, Kayla Rigby, Katie Galuli, Leslie Don Don Donovan, Kendra Lynn, Rena Blanco, Kyle Hooks, Candace Lafitz, Stephen Dittrich, Melanie Pine, and a few, uh, oh, Laura Marlowe, and then a few others who privately messaged. So thank you again. This episode is gold, my friend. I so appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. And if you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube and it meant something to you, share it with a friend, send it to one person and just let them know that you're there for them. That'll create a sense of purpose and connection for you and a sense of support and community for them. So stay curious and grow everyone. Thanks again. Thanks girl. You did awesome. Thank you.